Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be going over the mathematical game of NIM. NIM is a game that has many different variations and it's been played from the ancient times. We still play it modernly too in the form of cards. But before we get started on ways you can win at NIM, we first have to know what NIM is. Now, NIM is a game where there's multiple or one pile of a certain object. It doesn't really matter because you, NIM is very generic. These objects can be anything, varying from cards to stones to whatever you want them to be. So in this case, just to make things easier so that I don't have to draw a bunch of circles or whatever, we're just going to use numbers. So what NIM involves is they're having multiple piles or they can just be one. So let's start with a simple example of the game of NIM. So let's say there's 12 objects in the first pile and there's nine objects in the second pile. And there's at this point, there's also many different variations. One variation is that you can take any amount from a certain pile on your turn, where you take turns with your opponent. Normally, NIM is played with two players and that's basically most of the time. You always play only against with one opponent. And you take turns. It doesn't matter who goes first or second. That's decided on who, whatever you want to do. Now, later on, we'll, know, we'll learn that going first or second actually matters. And it can be the deciding factor of who wins the game, considering that the person knows how to win. So on each player's turn, you can take anywhere from 1 to 3. That's one version of NIM. 1 to 3 objects from one pile. That's one version of NIM, and there's also another version of NIM where you can take any amount from one pile. Now, there's no version of NIM where you can take multiple values from each pile because that kind of ruins the way NIM works. Now, there's also other versions such as 1 to n objects. It really is just very generic. But in this video, we're just going to be focusing kind of on these two. And let's just get started by having a basic game that's really simple with just one pile. So let's say we have a pile of with eight, eight objects. What do we do? So first of all, we have to figure out the objective when you're playing NIM. What are you trying to do such that you will win? So there's two, again, there's two different versions. The first version states that if you get the last piece or last object, you win. And the second version is if you get the last object, which in that case, you're forced to take the last object you lose. And the person who forced you to get the last object wins. So in this case, we're going to start by playing by the first version, where if you take the last object, you win. So let's say that we have one pile. We're saying that we have one pile of eight. And let's say that we go first. Let's just play a practice game where we're just taking random amounts. So we can take one from the pile. Our opponent, which is also clueless of how to win, they'll just take maybe two. We'll take two. And then they can take zero. They can take three. And they get the last object. Now note that we're playing this version where you can only take one to three. If we could take any amount with one pile, you would obviously go first and take all eight of the objects because you can take any amount. But in this case, you're only allowed to take one to three objects because there's just one pile. So that's the only logical rule that can be applied. Now we realize that this game is, it feels really simple. Is there a way that we can guaranteed win at this game? And the answer is actually yes. So let's start again with our simple case of just eight objects and there's only one pile with the same rules we had before. So maybe we want to go second instead. 
we let our opponent take any amount. They take three, so they're at we're at five objects in the pile. Now it's our turn, and we realize that if we get the number of objects in the pile to four, our opponent can never get to zero, but we can after our opponent makes their turn. So when our opponent makes their turn, they might go to three, and then we can go to zero. It doesn't matter whatever the opponent takes, they can never get to zero, but when they take their turn, we'll be able to get to zero because obviously when it's our turn, it's some value less than or equal to three. So then we can obviously make it so that it's zero. So in this case, we're just going to take one to make it into this four case where we force the opponent to lose. And what we'll call this position is a losing position. The reason why it's a losing position is because you automatically lose if you are the person in this position. So our opponent has to take some value. They might take three, and then we take one, and the game's over, and we win. But then we ask ourselves the question, how do we get from eight to four objects in a pile? Well, we can think about it this way. We can simplify it to four to zero objects. It's the same thing. We're only trying to move four, and our opponent can never go to four if they're the first person to make a move. Only we can. After our opponent makes a move, we're guaranteed to be able to move, to manipulate the pile into a pile with only four objects. So, all we have to do is, if our opponent takes one, we'll take three. If our opponent takes two, we'll take two. If our opponent takes three, we'll take one. And same with this next step. So here's an example. Our opponent takes two, and then we take two. Our opponent takes two, then we take two again, and we win. So this game is actually really simple if we simplify it into groups of four. So we can generalize this into any number. So let's say we have a pile with n in it. We realize that given that we go first, we can always simplify n to n the remainder when n is divided by 4. So if n is a multiple of 4, that means that if n is divisible by 4, then we always win, provided that we go second. Now, if n is not divisible by 4, then we have to go first. All we have to do is take the remainder when we're going first. When we take the remainder of when n is divided by 4, then we're left with a value n such that it's divisible by 4, and we're back to the original position where we win. So it just depends on who goes first and second in this case. And it turns out that it, this first or second position actually matters when you're moving on to piles with when you're moving on to games of NIM with more piles. And that's what we're, what we're going to see in the next video. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be making more NIM videos because we've really only gone over a really simple version of NIM, and we can obviously make it more complex and do some more work on finding out how to win basically any game of NIM in general. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and be sure to check out my other videos.